Okay, so batteries are wonderful and all, but how on earth did I know that the zinc was the anode and that the copper was the cathode? How did I know who was oxidized or reduced? Well, for that, we need to go to reference table J. On reference table J, metals are listed from most likely to undergo oxidation to most likely to undergo reduction. So, if I was going to make a battery with magnesium and copper, since magnesium is higher than copper, magnesium would be more likely to undergo oxidation and therefore copper would undergo reduction. Since the anode is where oxidation takes place, an ox moo, okay, this would be the anode or the negative end of your battery. And since copper is listed lower and is reduced, that's the cathode, red cat, that would be the cathode and that would be the positive end of your cell. And that's how you tell who's oxidized and who's reduced. And I'm going to prove to you that magnesium metal can be oxidized by a copper solution, but that copper metal cannot be oxidized by a magnesium solution, which I have set up right over here. And we're going to start by putting on our handy dandy goggles. I love these things. I do not sleep in them because they give you goggle face, but that's okay. It's a status symbol. And this is what we're going to use to prove that magnesium can be oxidized by copper ions, but that copper cannot be oxidized by magnesium ions. Okay, so we'll start off by taking some magnesium zero, plain old magnesium metal. Remember, all by itself, it has no charge. Ay, 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 ay. That should be enough magnesium. You get a good view of that. Now, you can see how magnesium is all nice and shiny, like a good metal should be. And now, we're going to add some copper solution to it. Wow. Magnesium is not shiny anymore. Why not? Because the magnesium was oxidized by the copper. This, ooh, it's bubbling too. That's another evidence of chemical reaction. It's exothermic. It's giving off heat, causing the water to actually come to a boil. Ooh, pretty heavy stuff. Also, you can see how the solution has turned from blue to very pale, almost clear around the edge as the copper ions are now reduced to plain old copper zero. Now, remember, the reason why copper nitrate is blue is because it contains copper ions, which is a transition metal, and transition metal compounds tend to be colored. So magnesium zero and copper plus two, check. We do have a reaction. Magnesium is oxidized by copper ions. Now, let's try the reverse over here with copper and magnesium ions. So we'll start off by taking copper Ooh, this is also nice and shiny, but look at the difference in color. This is more uh, copper color. Gee, I wonder why it's copper color. Could it be because it's uh, copper? And we're going to add to it some magnesium nitrate. Notice how magnesium nitrate isn't colored because magnesium, not a transition metal. All right, let's see if this works. Well, gee, would you look at that. It started out copper colored, and it's still copper colored. Well, I guess copper can't be oxidized by magnesium ions. So, to sum it all up, magnesium zero and copper plus two, check. Copper zero and magnesium plus two, eh. So remember guys, when you're building a voltaic cell, the top metal is going to be oxidized, and therefore your anode. And the bottom metal will be reduced, and therefore your cathode. And that is how a battery is put together.